crochet the sand dollar bag. To make the bag, we're going to be using one ball of Biso Bear yarn, which is sport weight organic cotton. And we're also going to be using a size F crochet hook, which is also 3.75 millimeter. You want to tie your yarn onto your crochet hook, whichever way you prefer. You can use a slip knot, a solid knot, whatever works best for you. And you want to chain four. Slip stitch into the fourth chain from your hook. Remember to not count the loop on your crochet hook, that's your working loop. So we'll count back four and slip stitch into that first chain. Chain three. This chain three counts as a double crochet and we're now going to work 15 more double crochets into the chain four ring. A double crochet is yarn over, insert your hook into the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We'll do that again. Yarn over, insert your hook in the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So now if we count the chain three as our first double crochet and two more, we have a total of three so far. We need 13 more for a total of 16 double crochets in the ring. We now have 16 double crochets in the ring. If we include the chain three at the beginning of the round as our first double crochet, you want to slip stitch to the top of the first stitch at the beginning of the round to join. Well, our first double crochet is a chain three, so you want to count up to the third or top chain of that chain three and slip stitch into it. And this is what the end of round one should look like. Round two begins with a chain three that counts as our first double crochet, and we're going to work two more double crochets into that very same stitch. Now for our next stitch, we're going to work a front post double crochet, and what that means is we're going to yarn over our hook, insert our hook around the post of the next stitch from front to back, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And you see how it raises the stitch and so we have this raised ridge here where we front post double crocheted over the double crochet in the row below. Okay, in the next stitch we're going to work three double crochets. And in the next stitch, we're going to work a front post double crochet. Okay, and this is what we're going to repeat around. Three double crochets in the next stitch and front post double crochet around the next stitch.
Okay, we're at the end of round two now, and we worked three double crochets in one stitch, then front post double crochet around the next stitch, and we did that sequence for a total of eight times. So now we should have eight sections of three double crochets in one stitch and eight front post double crochet stitches. We're ready to join, so we're going to join in the top chain of the chain three from the beginning of the round with a slip stitch, and this is what the end of round two should look like. Round three begins with a chain three, which counts as a double crochet. We're going to double crochet a second time in that same first stitch. One double crochet in the next stitch. Two double crochets in the next stitch. and front post double crochet around the next front post double crochet. Okay, and this is what we're going to repeat around. Two double crochets in the next stitch, one in the next, two in the next, front post double crochet in the next. And repeat that all the way around. Okay, we've made it around round three, and we should now have eight sections of five double crochets in each section and eight sections of one front post double crochet. We're ready to join, so we're going to slip stitch into the top chain of the chain three at the beginning of the round to join. This is what the end of round three should look like. Round four begins with a chain one and single crochet in the first stitch. We're going to chain five, skip four stitches, one, two, sorry, skip three stitches, one, two, three, and single crochet in the next. So now we're going to repeat around as follows. Chain five, skip three stitches, one, two, three, and single crochet in the next.
For the last chain 5 space, we're going to chain 2 and double crochet into the first single crochet at the beginning of the round to join. That chain 2 and double crochet gives us the same linear space of chain 5, but it positions us into the top center of that chain 5 space, so we're ready to begin the next round in the center of the chain 5 space. So we should now have 12 chain 5 spaces. This is what the end of round 4 should look like. Round 5 begins with the chain 1, single crochet in the first chain 5 space. We're going to chain 3, we're going to work a 3 double crochet cluster in the same space. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through 2, yarn over, insert your hook in the space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through 2, yarn over, insert your hook in the space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through 2. You should now have 4 loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all 4 loops. So now we have a chain 3, a 3 double crochet cluster. We're going to do a chain 3 pico, just chain 3, and slip stitch into the third chain from your hook. Chain 3, and single crochet in the same chain 5 space. Chain 5, single crochet in the next chain 5 space, chain 5, single crochet in the next chain 5 space, chain 5, and this is what we're going to repeat around. We're going to slip stitch to the first single crochet at the beginning of the round to join. And this is what the end of round 5 should look like and also what the end of the first motif looks like. First motif meaning one motif that hasn't been joined to any other motifs yet. You should have 4 corners and 4 sets of 3 chain 5 spaces.
chain five, single crochet in the next chain five space, chain five, single crochet in the next chain five space, chain five, single crochet in the next chain five space. We're ready to do another corner. Okay, now we'll fasten off and we have two motifs completed and they're joined with a one-sided join. Next, I'm gonna show you how to do a one-sided join where you're joining along the side that also has two motifs joined in the corner. Okay, we're gonna do a one-sided join where we're joining from this corner across here and joining in this corner and then finishing up our round five here. So I've worked rounds one through four, same as the original first motif, chain one, single crochet in the chain five space, chain three, three double crochet cluster, okay we're ready to do our joining pico which is a chain one slip stitch in the adjacent motifs pico chain one slip stitch to create the pico chain three and single crochet in the same chain five space you see we have our first corner joined chain two slip stitch into the chain five space on the adjacent motif chain two, single crochet in the next chain five space on our working motif. Chain two, slip stitch into the next chain five space on our adjacent motif, chain two, single crochet in the next chain five space on our working motif. Chain two, Single, a slip stitch into the next chain five space in our adjacent motif, chain two, single crochet in the next chain five space on our working motif. Okay, so now we have our corner joined. We have three chain five spaces created and joined to the adjacent three chain five spaces. And now we're ready to work a corner that joins into a corner that's already been joined into. So what I wanted to point out is that the spot where we joined these two picots together is where we're going to join every pico going forward. So let's start our corner so you can see what I'm talking about. We're going to chain three, three double crochet cluster, okay chain one. We're ready to do our pico in the corner. So now what I want to point out is that the spot where we joined them together, so this was our original, this was the one that slip stitched into that one, you want to work into that very same spot. It'll just make a much cleaner and neater join the more we do, the, the more if we do all of the joins in the same spot. Chain one, come back and slip stitch to join this pico on our working motif chain three 
and single crochet in the same chain five space. And I'm going to set that down so you can see by joining them in the same spot instead of just willy-nilly anywhere in that corner it makes a much cleaner join and it'll look prettier when we're done. Now depending on how you end up doing it all I suggest is that you be consistent um, but if I were to give my recommendation I would say put them all in the same spot so that it looks nice and tight and clean as you're going along. Okay so now we've done our one-sided join and we're going to finish up round five the same way we finish up round five on our original motif and any portion of any motif that isn't being joined to another motif. Just regular old round five. Okay, and now we have our one-sided join that's worked where we're joining it in a corner where we've already worked another corner. Isn't that cool how now our corners, when they're lining up, it's becoming a secondary little floral motif in the center? I love designing motifs that way. I always love seeing a secondary motif show up. That's why I always do the corners specifically so that you can see something like that. Just adds for more visual interest. It's one of the things I love about motif designing. Anyway, so now we're ready to do a two-sided join. And if you were making an afghan or any type of two-dimensional project, this would be all you would need to, keep, to get started. Now we're ready to begin a two-sided join. And once you know how to do this, you could make any type of two-dimensional project with these instructions, whether you're making a pillowcase, a shawl, a wrap, a scarf, an afghan, anything two-dimensional. All you need to know is how to make the motif, how to join it on one side, and how to join it on two sides. So at this point, you would be ready to do any of those projects. Going forward, I'm gonna show you how to create a bag from this. So we're going to get a little more complicated as we go, but for lots of good reasons. And in the meantime, this is the two-sided join that will allow you to create all sorts of really wonderful projects with this motif. So we're going to start it, we started rounds one through four, exactly the same as the first motif and every motif. And now we're going to get started with our first corner and joining it to this corner here. So we'll start with a chain one, single crochet in the same chain five space, chain three, three double crochet cluster, And now we're ready to join our pico on this motif with the pico on this motif. So we'll start with a chain one, slip stitch into the adjacent motifs pico, chain one, slip stitch to create the pico, chain three, and single crochet in the same chain five space. I'll set this down so you can see where we're at. We've joined our first corner. We're now going to create three chain five spaces and join them to three chain five spaces here. And when we join a chain five space, we do a chain two, slip one, chain two, 
that counts as the chain five. So chain two, slip stitch into the adjacent motifs, chain five space, chain two, single crochet in the next chain five space on our working motif, chain two, slip stitch into the next chain five space on the adjacent motif, chain two, single crochet in our next chain five space in our working motif, chain two, slip stitch into the adjacent motifs, chain five space, chain two, and single crochet in our current motifs, next chain five space. So I'll set that down so you can see we did three chain five spaces and join them to the three chain five spaces on the adjacent motif. We're now ready to do our next corner and we're gonna join it into the same pico that we joined all of these other motifs corners. So corner starts with a chain three and a three double crochet cluster. Okay, we're gonna do our chain three pico as a chain one. Find the chain where we slip stitched all of these others. It'll be right here. Slip stitch into that same chain, chain one. Then we'll come back on our working motif and slip stitch to join our pico chain three, and single crochet in the same chain five space on our working motif. And I'm going to set this down so you can see where we're at. Okay, so we have one sided, one side joined of this motif, but this is a two sided joint. So at the end of the second corner, we did a corner joining three chain five spaces along the side in a second corner. Now we need to join to these three chain five spaces along a different motifs side and then join to this corner. So it's the same thing we've done, but we're just repeating it and repeating it on a second motif. So we'll join our three chain five spaces. We'll set that down so you can see where we're at. Okay, we've done our three chain five spaces and join them to the adjacent three chain five spaces on the opposite motif. We're now ready to work our corner and join it to this corner. Okay, so we have this side and this side joined. So it's a two-sided join with three corners that are joined and two sides that are joined. Now we're going to finish up round five, same as we've done with all the other motifs up until this point. Okay, now we have four motifs joined. The first one is just our first motif. The next one was joined one-sided. This one was joined one-sided where you joined into a corner that already had a join. And then this one was joined on two sides. And this is everything you'll need to know how to do any two-dimensional project from a scarf to an afghan. And going forward now, I'm going to show you how to create this bag by doing joining them in a special formation, and then also doing a three-sided join. 
Continue to join motifs 5 through 8 in a combination of 1 and 2 sided joins until your 8 motifs look exactly like this. Okay, so we have motifs 1 through 8 joined in exactly this shape and now we're going to turn our work over so that the post stitches, which is the right side of the work, are now uh, not the side that's facing us. We're looking at the opposite or back side. And now what I want to show you is that these motifs on the side and this motif on the bottom is folded in half because in order to create a flat bottomed and three-dimensional bag, it's these motifs that are going to be facing on both the right and wrong side of the bag. So in order to understand how to join our motifs together, we want to make sure they're facing in the right direction. So this is the bottom of the bag with this being face, if the bag was folded in half completely, this would this motif would face both on the front side and the back side. And these side motifs will be facing out half of it on the front and half of it on the back. These are two motifs that will point up for and be the attachment for the straps. So now that we're looking at it, the way the bag is going to be used and the way it's going to become three-dimensional, this helps us to understand how to join the next motifs. And you'll see that the motif that's going to go here actually needs to be joined on three sides. And it needs to be joined on this side of this motif, this side of that motif, and this side of that motif. And we work in a counterclockwise direction if we're right-handed and a clockwise direction if we're left-handed. So you want to make sure that you have the bag facing you accordingly. We're now going to grab our motif that's ready to go with rounds one through four already completed. And, and remember, we use one more corner than the number of sides we're joining. And since we're joining on three sides, that means we're actually joining in four corners now. So we're going to start our first corner the same as always, chain one and single crochet in the same chain five space, chain three and a three double crochet cluster in the same space. Chain one, we're going to slip stitch into this motif's pico. Chain one, slip stitch in our corner to create our pico, chain three, and single crochet in the same chain five space. Okay, our first corner is completed. We're now going to work along this side to this corner, this side to this corner, along this side to this corner. Okay, so we've joined along this side. We're going to join in We're going to join in this corner now. Making sure we find that same exact chain or same spot where both picots were joined together before. Okay, so we have our full side joined to the corner. We're now going to join along this edge here.
Okay, so now we've joined across both edges. We're ready to join in our next corner here. Okay, so now we've joined across two sides and three corners. We're now ready to join across the third side over here. And we're ready to join the next corner. And then we'll come around and finish up the end of round five on this motif. It really is helpful to fold those motifs in half. Otherwise, it can be really kind of mind-boggling trying to figure out the position of each of these motifs. So now you can see if you fold them back the way they were. Remember, these two points are like the top of the top of a camisole, but they're going to be the points for our shoulder straps. So when you make sure that they're pointing up and you fold the side one in half and the bottom one in half, it helps you to see this one goes on that diagonal here. And now we're going to do that again for this motif here. So this one will also be a three-sided join along these three sides. Okay, so you wanna make sure it's facing you in the right direction, whether you're a right-handed or left-handed crocheter, make sure it's facing you so that you'll be working in the direction of your crochet. And we're going to start we have rounds one through four completed already, and we're going to start round five. And I'm going to do it exactly the same way as I did the last one, but without talking this time so that you can just follow along. Okay, we have the first side joined. We're now ready to start the next corner. Okay, we have our second corner. We're now ready to join along this edge here.
crochet we're now ready to join in this corner here we've worked from this side and joined on this side If it's hard to see where the two picots are joined, giving it a little pull usually helps me to see it right away and very clearly. Okay, and now we're ready to join on the third side here. Okay, we've joined our third side now. We started here, joined here, here, and here. We're ready to join our fourth corner. Okay, and we'll need to turn our work now once more so we can work along the end of round five of this motif. If you haven't been able to recognize this as a bag yet, you should at the end of this round. There we go. We're starting to look like a bag. We did a three-sided join here and here, and now we're ready to do a two-sided join here. All right, so we're ready to do this motif here, and it's going to require two-sided joining. While you already know how to do two-sided joining, it is a little bit different when you're working into an existing fabric that's already folded and three-dimensional, so I thought I'd at least just let you watch me do it so you can see how you manipulate the fabric differently, and sometimes you just have to, you know, kind of manipulate things and move them around just to be able to get to where you need to go. So we're going to start this round the same as we've started all of the round fives previously. And remember to do a two-sided join means we're joining in three corners and the two sides. So we've started our first corner and we're going to join it into this previously joined corner. Give it a little pull so I make sure that I join it in exactly the same spot as the other two pico corners were joined. Okay, and so now our first corner is joined. Okay, our first side is now joined. We're going to work our, we're going to join into our second corner.
it wouldn't hurt to weave in your ends as you go on this project too. It'd be just one less thing to be confused by as you're working around all of these joins. Okay, so we've got first corner, first side, second corner joined. We're now moving on to joining on the second side. set that down so you can see we've joined from this corner along this side this corner this side we're now ready to join in this corner here Okay, we've got our two sides joined. So come back around this way, and you can see the rest of this motif is now going to be joined in the very same fashion as the first motif. We're just going to finish up round five without joining in any more spaces. Okay, we are really starting to look like a bag now. Okay, so now for a little bit of homework, I'd like you to join the next two motifs here and join each of them with a two-sided join so that we'll have our four corners at the top and we'll be able to do our bag straps after that. So at this point, you wanna do two more motifs and join each one of them with a two-sided join here, facing this way and here, facing this way. Okay, we have all of our motifs joined together for the entire bag, and we're now ready to begin the top hem of the bag, and from there we'll add the straps. So we're really in the home stretch now. We're going to join our yarn to any one of the picots on one of the top corners of the bag. And so you're going to slip stitch into any one of those picots. Chain one and work three single crochets in that same picot. Okay, for a quick overview, we're going to be working three single crochets into each of these upper points along the edge of the bag. And we're going to be working decreases of three single crochet together in each of the low points of the zigzag in the top of the bag. So we worked our three single crochets in the first pico. Now we have this chain three space here. We're going to work three single crochets in the chain three space. In each of the next three chain five spaces, we're going to work five single crochets. Okay, so now we have a chain three, the join in the corner, and the chain three. We're going to work 
two single crochets in that first chain three space. We're going to work three single crochets together, pulling up one loop in the chain three space, one loop in the join, and one loop in the next chain three space, and pull all of those loops together. Then work two more single crochets in that second chain three space. In each of our next three chain five spaces, we're going to work five single crochets. and three single crochets in the next chain three space. Okay, and we're ready to repeat that all the way around. We start with three single crochets in the pico, then three, five, 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 two single crochets, the three single crochets together for the decrease, two more in that chain three space, five more in each of the three chain five spaces, and three in the chain three space. So we're going to repeat that all the way around. Okay, we've reached all the way around the bag and we're going to slip stitch into the first single crochet at the beginning of the round to join. Okay, so now we have a round of single crochet around the tops of all of those motifs, working three single crochets into each of the top peaks of the corners and the low point corners we did a three single crochet together just to keep that nice zigzag edge going and now on our next round we're going to do the same thing we're going to chain one ah, chain one single crochet in that first stitch. Now in each of the center single crochets of those points we're going to work three single crochets and then work one single crochet across to the low point corner and in the low point corner we're going to work single crochet three together then in every high point corner we're going to work three single crochets and the rest of the round is just one single crochet in each stitch around. Okay, we're one stitch before the uh, single crochet three together from the row below. So as long as we're one stitch before it, we can do our three single crochet together. Like that, and then we'll single crochet across to the next top point, and we'll work three single crochets in that stitch. Okay, we've reached our top point corner again. We're going to work three single crochets. And now we'll work one single crochet in each stitch across to the low point and one stitch before the decrease from the round previous. We'll start at one stitch before. Okay, we finished round two and we have our decreases in the lower points and our increases in the upper points and we have one single crochet in each stitch around otherwise. And now we're ready to do our third and final round of the top of the bag. And so we're going to slip stitch across to one stitch before the high point. 
So the high point would be the center single crochet in any of the sections where there were three single crochets. We're going to chain five and skip that center stitch and slip stitch in the next stitch. And now we're going to slip stitch in every stitch around until we get to the next high point center single crochet in the three single crochet increase over here. So we're going to skip the decreases, not worry about them at all anymore. We're just going to slip stitch in each one of these stitches across to the next high point and when we're one stitch before that center single crochet of the three single crochet increase, we're going to slip stitch, chain five, skip that center stitch and slip stitch in the next so that it looks just like this and we're going to do that all the way around. Okay, so we've made it all the way around and at this point we should have a slip stitch in every single stitch around the top edge of the bag and we should have, except for the top four points, where we should have a chain five space instead. So you want to fasten off and I'm going to show you on the finished bag now what this looks like. And this one has all the ends woven in. What a treat is that. So much nicer to see a project when the ends are already woven in. So now to create the strap, I'm going to show you on here how it's done. Okay, so you can see we have our single crochet and our slip stitches done and our chain five spaces. So now to create the straps, you slip stitch into any one of these chain five spaces and you chain across and slip stitch into the next chain five space. Then single crochet across all those stitches and slip stitch over here. Then you're going to single crochet all the way back around here and slip stitch. Then slip stitch across all of those stitches and slip stitch here. And the reason we do that, and the reason we did all of these slip stitches, is so that we don't have any saggy stitches at our top edge. In order to keep our bag nice and secure and fortified, slip stitches are the toughest stitches you can place there. So slip stitches and chains are not only very strong, but they're also equally as strong. So by matching chain on one side and slip stitch on the other, it gives you a uniform strap that's not stretchier on one side than the other, it's pretty uniform on both sides. So that's why we did a slip stitch along the top edge and why we match the chain with slip stitch on either side of the strap. And by joining it to these chain five spaces with slip stitches instead of sewing makes it that much more secure as well. Please make sure you visit my website to download the free step-by-step -step pattern along with all of the photos that we uh, used in the video for a photo tutorial that goes step by step with the line by line instructions. And you can also get information on this 100% USA made organic cotton yarn called Be So Bear. You can actually make this bag for around $8. If you have any questions, by all means, please leave them for me in the video description. Subscribe to my channel for more videos.